Praise the Lord, everybody! <laughs> Frank's gonna get mad at me. Come on, it's hey. it, come on. This is our celebration day. Come on, Hosanna! Blessed is He. Come on, come on. Are you thankful that He rode through a city? Come on, hey. Hallelujah! Hey. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Sing it with me.
thankful? Will you be my light when I cannot see? When I can't take another step, Lord, will you carry me? When I've lost my fight, will you be my strength? Will you set me a table in the presence of my enemies? Come on, I shall not. I shall not.
our souls. Woo! I will dwell in his house forever. Right there, we could just quit right there.
Aren't you thankful for his mercy this morning? Where would we be but for the mercy of God? Where would you be right now? Think about that for a minute. Where would you be right now if it weren't for the mercy of God? He's so good to us. He's so faithful. He's a good, good father. Well, Father, we just come before you right now. Lord, we thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your goodness. Lord, we're so undeserving. But you're still such a good father. <laughs> Lord, I thank you for your sweet spirit in this place today. God, that we can come together and worship you in spirit and in truth. And your presence meets us here. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. I have a couple of announcements for you this morning. You may be seated. First of all, don't forget to give. Um, and also, I wanted to remind you of missions and the 316 Challenge for Youth Camp. If you signed up for the 316 Challenge for Youth Camp, that means that you text $3.16 every week uh, with the keyword camp. And you can text, if you want to give to missions, you can give to missions that way as well. Just use the keyword missions when you give. Um, also, we will have no regular Wednesday night service for the next two weeks. This upcoming Wednesday, do we all know what that is? That is the beginning of the journey, and I'll get to that in just a moment. But come out Wednesday night. It's the same time, 7 o'clock. But don't just come to Wednesday night service this week. Bring people with you. Bring someone with you. This is something you don't want to miss. We're having the best time. Yesterday was our full dress rehearsal, and just the Lord met us here. It was amazing. And I'm so excited uh, to see what he's going to do this week. But the following week, uh, we are closing down the office. We've all been running 100 miles an hour the past several months. And so our pastor has given us the week off. And uh, we won't have, yeah, yeah. That's a big deal. And so we will not have Wednesday night service the week after Easter. So you all get a break as well. Just stay home and enjoy your family that night. Um, 
chocolate Easter eggs. There you go. You go ahead and do we that. We have one. chocolate Easter eggs still on sale from our quilting ministry. Uh, all these proceeds go directly to the quilting ministry. These are quilts that goes into hospitals, NICU units, goes to, um, uh, I, I forget all the different areas uh, of the hospital. Uh, they make they make uh, recovery. They make uh, blankets for people, quilts of valor, and for cancer patients, I think, also. Uh, quilts for ca cancer patients. That's what you are funding. So it isn't just going in a, somewhere and into a bank account. It's just going out to cover people. Amen? So that's still going on this week. Uh, next uh, Sunday on Easter, they will take orders today, but they will only give those orders out next Sunday. They will not be selling their regular Easter eggs. Where is Debbie? The, uh, you will not be selling anything in the lobby next Sunday. Is that correct? Unless you have extra, right? And then it's double, right? <laughs> no, I'm just teasing, but support this ministry if you can, please. Go ahead, baby. And oh, chocolate pretzels. <laughs> they have chocolate pretzels. They'll change your life. And you'll have to exercise. I, I got a text uh, last Sunday that said, hey, what was it? We're either going to have to stop selling these Easter eggs or start an exercise program. <laughs> One of the two. Well, we're just helping you out here. And lastly, we have the journey this week. Um, we've been working hard since last fall. And... Um, God has helped us, and uh, we need his help. This is bigger than us. We can't do this on our own. We need his help, and we also need you. We need you to come out and support this. We need you to invite, invite, invite. I know we're doing a social media fast, but today, just today, please get on your Facebook and share the event. That, that's the best way to get the information out there so people can see the times, the days, what it is, a little more, more information about it. So if you would, please do that. Help us out. Invite your family, your friends, your neighbors, your coworkers, everybody you know to come out and see the journey. And that will be this week, uh, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, 7 p.m. The doors open at 6 p.m. You'll want to come early. you want to come as early as you can. And uh, also, we need people to pray during uh, the production. Uh, down in room six, we're gonna have a prayer team each of, each of the nights of the production uh, praying during the production. And if you have already volunteered for that, please see me after church and let me know which day you would like to volunteer to do that. If you would like to take a night to pray, um, please see me after church and I'll put you on the schedule. I think that's it. Great job, baby. Is she, isn't it a beautiful woman right here? I just love her. She's my favorite in the whole world. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jay. Man, you're looking trim and fit. One day I hope to grow up to be just like you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Well, we have, we have a uh, first time. Uh, we have a first timer here this morning, I guess. His name is Knox. K N O. Praise the Lord. Hey, give her a hand. That's, she just wants to come up. I love it. I don't know what it is, but she saw something up here she wanted to get to. What is it that she saw? No, no, I'm, I'm not trying to be funny here. What, 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 she, what was she trying to get to? Did she see something up here she wants to, to get at? Seriously. Terry, come on up here. I don't know. Something's going on here. Come on. Yeah, let her go. Let her go and see what she does. Let her go. Let go of her hand and see what she does. See where she goes. Yeah, go ahead. All right. Yeah, where are you headed, honey? Yeah, 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 you want to jump? You want to jump like Frank? That's fun, yeah. Oh, well, all right. I'm telling you. Don't make light of it. I, I, I'm telling you, there's something in it. Yeah, What? okay. Yeah. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. 
What's her name? What is it? Shandy? Shandy? Praise the Lord. One thing I know, when you taste it up, you can't get enough. Yeah. Mm. All right. You like it. It's fun, isn't it? Praise the Lord. All right. Well, well, Shandy's experiencing everything up here. We have a first-time guest. Well, not a guest. He's, he's a member. He was a member before he was ever born. We have Knox. Jennifer, grab a hold of Knox right there. Knox. This is the son of Bryce and Jennifer Weber. Stand up there. Bryce, stand up. This is Knox. As you can see, I, I, I'm sorry, as you can see, he takes after his dad in the hair department. I'm just, and, and when she, when they come in this morning, I was talking with Jennifer, and she said he calls me all kind of um, gallbladder. So I said, not a doubt, but he is, man, hair, but thank Give him a hand. This is Knox. You don't know what a gift he is. He is, he is truly a gift. And one other thing I want to uh, recognize this morning today is Pastor Randy and Sue Stanley's 50th wedding anniversary. Would you both please stand up? We want to honor you. We want to honor this great man and woman of God. You don't know. You don't know the price they've paid in the kingdom. And I mean that. They've been overlooked many times, sidestepped many times, put on a shelf many times, but God knows, God sue, God knows, God sees, and he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. I thank you that you never quit, you didn't stop, you didn't give up, but you just keep on going when you didn't feel like, keep on going. I'm thankful. And you are a witness to every marriage in this house today because of your persistence. It didn't, I preached, I think it was last Sunday, love doesn't keep a marriage together. Right. Commitment does. And I, Pastor Randy, he, I mean, he's next to perfect, but I'd say at home he's probably not perfect. And Sue had to press in to love him a few times. Amen. Well, um, hmm, both ways. Yes or no? Yes? Okay. Um, this is a little uh, unusual uh, this morning. Um, we were going to hold this for the production uh, for Easter Sunday. Um, but I just, um, there's something in it. And I don't know for sure what it is that God wants to do this morning, but... Uh, I think we're just going to move in this direction, and then, then by God's grace, I pray the Lord help me to feed you all uh, this morning. Um, but sometimes there is a there is a time to sing, and sometimes there's a time to speak the word. and And I believe that we got one more song we need to sing. Uh, we we uh, there's one more song they need to sing, and then uh, if God would allow, I, I'll, uh, by God's grace, if you'll help me to preach, I'll preach to you a little bit, and then. Um, then you can go home and get some physical food. But right now, let your, let your, let your spirit man be filled. I want all of you to stand to your feet all over the house. Even if you're watching by internet, you're at home, stand to your feet. Just sing. This. I'm telling you, there's life in this song. Go ahead, Joey.
Chip is stuck to an envelope this morning. That's glorious. Doing our best to, to get this um, this production ready. But when I say the word production, I don't want to mislead you. I don't want you to misunderstand. We are not doing it to be seen, but we are doing it our best to. To get the. King of kings and the Lord of lords lifted high so that he's seen that in his kingdom's adv advanced. It is not about a church. It is not about us. It has nothing to do at all with anyone in here. It has everything to do with Jesus, and we're just trying to be obedient. So please invite someone, come out, and, and let, a, 
let our production tell the story of the Word of God this coming week. And I believe that souls will be saved and lives changed, minds renewed, bodies transformed and healed, and curses broken and yokes destroyed and people set free. I want to talk to you this morning by a title, If You Only Knew, If You Only Knew. You only knew what God had in store for you. If you only knew what God wanted to do in your life. If you only were willing to press through the mess to taste the freedom. If you're only willing to not give up the taste of the joy that only God can give you. Joy that cannot come from a bottle or a prescription or a drug or a relationship or a home or a car. But joy that only comes from God the Father. Tell your neighbor if you only knew. I want to read to you the, one of the traditional Palm Sunday scriptures in Luke 19, 33 through 44 this morning. But as they... We're loosing the coat. Now you have to understand that Jesus is getting ready to, to make the triumphal entry. And he told some of his disciples, go in town. He said, you'll find a certain house. He told them which one it was. You'll find a coat. He said, loose the coat and bring him to me. So the disciples went and they loosed the coat. And the owner said to them, why are you loosing the coat? And they said, the Lord has need of him. Then they brought him to Jesus, and they threw their clothes on the colt, and they set Jesus on him. And as he went, many spread their clothes on the ground. Then, as he was now drawing near the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all of the mighty works they had seen. Now remember, last week, I preached to you from John chapter 6 that there were many disciples, more than just the 12. I don't want you to ever get in the frame of mind or the thought that there were only 12 disciples. And in here we find that there, were, uh, there was a multitude of disciples. A disciple is someone who follows Jesus. It is, it is an apprentice to Jesus. But just because we're labeled as a disciple doesn't mean that we're automatically knowing or in and that all is well, but that he that endures to the end shall be saved. Well, we don't preach that much anymore, do we? We just like to blanket everything and just say, oh, all is well. If you've accepted Jesus when you were five years old and you're living like a hellion now, it's okay. He that endureth to the end, meaning that we have to live a life representing Jesus from the time we say yes to him to the time that we die. Well, Amen. So it said there was a multitude of disciples begin to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works they had seen. Tell your neighbor, many follow just because of what they see. Saying, blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And some of the Pharisees, tell your neighbor, there's the white beards. <laughs> Some of, the white, some of the Pharisees called to him from the crowd, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. But he answered and said to them, I tell you that if these were to remain silent, the stones would immediately cry out. Now as he drew near, he saw the city and wept over it, saying, If you had known, even you, especially in this your day, the things that make for your peace, but now they are hidden from your eyes. For days will come upon you when your enemies will build an embankment around you, surround you, and close you in on every side and level you and your children within you to the ground. And they will not leave in you one stone upon another because you did not know the time of your visitation. When God is moving, when God is trying to penetrate a heart, it is imperative that that individual gives way and recognizes 
the visitation that the Holy Spirit is trying to move upon an individual. I want you to understand that Jesus is only obligated to reach out to us one time. But because of his great mercy, there's times that it's more than once, twice, three, or a hundred times. But he doesn't have to. Is there anyone in the house that would be honest and say, I didn't answer the first time, but one of the times that he called me. Do you realize that we could have missed? The prophet Zechariah in Zechariah 9 verses 9 describes how a king will come to Jerusalem one day. He will be gentle riding a donkey on a colt, the foal of a donkey. He will not come with military might to impose his rule by force, but with gentleness to establish his reign of peace. The prophet Zechariah prophesied this some 500 years before, and now Jesus is riding toward Jerusalem. And as he rides, there's three things I want you to notice. The people worship, the religious whined, and the king wept. As Jesus is making his way to Jerusalem in verses 36 through 38, we find the people are worshiping. Their celebration was spontaneous. It wasn't anything planned, but they had seen Jesus, they had heard about Jesus, and the atmosphere was now electric because the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the prophesied one is now entering Jerusalem. Why were they worshiping? Because this was Jesus. Jesus was there. Anytime Jesus shows up, there is reason to worship. There is reason to Give God praise. They had seen the miracles. People freed. Chains broken. When we come in here, you got to be careful where you step because there's chains laying all over the place that Jesus showed up and broke. Cleaners in this place have a heavy job. Cleaning up all the chains and the garbage we leave behind because of how Jesus said. Jesus is worthy of praise. He's worthy of our worship. (laughs) The people cried out, blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. This means that blessed is he who is sent by God to save his people. In Mark chapter 11, verses 8 and 9, they cried out, Hosanna, Hosanna to the king. In the Greek, it means to save now or to help now. The problem is that, is that we live in a now generation where we want to be saved now. We want to be helped now. We want the provision now. We want the deliverance now. But are we willing to live it permanently? The people in Jerusalem were much like today. They were oppressed by the government. They had a lot of things going on in them, and they just wanted help for now. And we don't just need help for now. We need help for eternity. We need to get our eyes and our mind off just what's going on right now. And we need to get our eyes and mind on heavenly things where God's taking us. What is it that God wants us to see? I remind you that when Jesus was born, that the stars were beginning to move. It tells us that the shepherds and the kings were not looking at present circumstance. They were looking at heaven. And when they saw heaven move, they knew that God wanted to do something. We need to get our eyes off your taxes. I can preach that real good this morning. We need to get our eyes off the taxes, off politics, off being politically correct, off what's going on around us, and get our mind, our eyes, our heart focused on on Jesus. He's the only one that's going to do anything. I'm going to. We got two great candidates for president coming up. (laughs) Biden and Trump. Don't even start on me. (laughs) Save your fingers the massage. I'll not read it. 
I, I listen, I love both men. I, I pray that whoever's elected, I pray, I, I, I pray that they allow God to transform their heart. I, I, whoever it is. I pray that they would allow God to transform them heart, their heart, and that they would that God would be able to use and infiltrate their mind to, to bring this nation back into alignment with the perfect will of God so we can see the blessing of God rain down upon us. But can I tell you, we don't need a Democrat, we don't need a Republican or an independent or anything else. We need Jesus in the United States of America ruling and reigning the hearts of the men and women put in leadership over us. That's free. That's not in my notes. And don't, don't get, just don't. Don't even start on me about stuff, about, poli, poli, stop. That's just an excuse. Bottom line, we need to get back to Jesus. Can I get an amen? The people freely worship Jesus with their possessions. They laid their clothes down on the road. We are to worship Jesus with our possessions. They worship Jesus with palm branches in Mark 11, 8. They, they worship Jesus with their praise. Listen, maybe you don't have much in a possession form, or maybe you don't have a palm branch, but how many of you have air in your lungs? You have an opportunity to praise the Lord. None of us have an excuse. Their joy was contagious. How many of you remember about three, four years ago when COVID? We, we go back and we graph our church attendance and all these different things and We'll find, we'll find, what was it, about two, about three years ago, we were building up, we were building up, and then the government said, oh, there's a, there's a massive COVID outbreak coming, there's a massive COVID outbreak coming, right before Easter, and Easter went, <laughs> we are so dictated by what we hear and what we see and what we smell. What about what you sense in your heart? I made a decision a long time ago that by God's grace, we will not shut this church house down again. It doesn't matter the outbreak. I'm not trying to be rebellious, nothing like that. I'm just saying I'm going to rely upon the Holy Spirit to lead us and direct us. I'm not, I'm not goofy. I, I might be a little weird, but I'm not goofy and I'm not rebellious. Anybody tell you that? But the joy was spontaneous, but it was also contagious. Contagious means that someone contracts something from you. Let us, not, let us not be ignorant that people are contracting something from you. Whether you realize it or not, I'm not talking about a, a, a sickness or a disease or a virus. I'm talking about your attitude. I'm talking about who you live for. I'm talking about the reason why you're living. When whoever you're around, you're spreading something, and whatever's con is it. This was an atmosphere of praise, and it was spreading, and it's supposed to. I didn't plan this out. Didn't even think about this part of the message when I saw it, but. What about Shandy? Was it Shandy? Yeah. Shandy, run it down here. Has Shandy ever been here before? Shandy's never been here before. I'm not trying to embarrass you. I'm just trying to make an illustration. Shandy, run, ran down here, never been here before. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. Most people, when they come into a church this size, they're very intimidated, and they don't move around too much because this is bigger than what I'm used to, but it didn't bother Shandy any. And we, I was raised in such a way that when I ran through the house, my mom would say, you better stop running. What do you think this is, a gymnasium or an auditorium? Well, somebody must have told Shandy that at home, and when she got in this house, and had a little bit of room, she thought, I'll just go ahead and run up front because she saw something yeah. stirring, moving up front that touched her. Yeah, sure. Ah, she's just a kid. I remind you, she's been in heaven since you were. And she saw something. It was contagious. And an atmosphere of worship and praise is supposed to be contagious. Don't worry, I don't want what you got looking like that. <laughs> you can have it. 
Oh, oh here, 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 here's a good one. Here's a good one. I see this a lot from where I stand when I preach. <laughs> Give me your phone, Joey. Give me your phone. Quick, quick. Give me your phone, Joey. Quick. You think I don't see? I see. And I'm telling you, you better have an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying. Listen, you, you, you ah, listen, listen, teenagers. I know I, I was a teenager one time. It was several decades ago. But I was a teenager once, and I thought it was all hogwash too. Until I had a gun sticking in my back and a hand on my chest demanding money. And I realized that if that man pulls the trigger, I'm a dead man and I had enough knowledge to know that if I die, I'm going to hell because I'm not ready. Listen, I don't care how old you are. I'm just saying that Jesus died on the cross because you're worth it. You need to listen to the message that God has to speak to you, not what a man or woman has to say, what God has to say to you. Can, I just, can we just give God praise right there because he is worthy. So as this atmosphere is contagious, this concerns some people. Now, I, I'm going to be real frank with you. I, I mean, I'm going to be real Debbie. I mean, I'm going to be real honest with you. When the Holy Spirit gets moving in a church, there's some people just like, yeah, this is great. I love it. And there's some people like, oh, God. Oh, man. We're about to find out if the rumors are true about what we hear about this place. And I can tell you there's no snakes here. If there is, the pastor will cut their heads off. You don't need to worry about it. I don't like snakes. Sorry, Scott. Scott likes snakes. There might be snakes in the balcony because Scott likes snakes. But if you're down on the main floor, you're, I'm just teasing. There's really no snakes up there. Oh, I shouldn't have said that. But the Holy Spirit, you will either embrace the Holy Spirit or you'll have reservations about the Holy Spirit. Having reservations is normal. It's our, it's our human nature. The only thing that I ask when the Holy Spirit begins to move, don't put a wall up. Just watch for a season and allow the Holy Spirit to minister to your heart. And then you do what he tells you to do in your heart. Amen? Amen. So, so this, this uh, i got to get to point two. So the atmosphere is electric. It's contagious. And, but this concerned some. This praise was contagious. And, the, and, the, and as the people worshiped, the religious people whined. The religious, the Pharisees, the white beards, the Sadducees, the whatever you want to call them. The Sanhedrin, they're all part of the same group. Teacher, you better rebuke your disciples for praising that way. And the thing that bothered the white the, the, the Pharisees was that, that they heard these disciples praising God, recognizing Jesus as the Son of God, and they felt this was blasphemous because they weren't willing to recognize Jesus as the Son of God. Are we with the same page? So in this text, we see religion trying to step into worship. So the atmosphere is electric, and the religious, the, the religion tries to step into worship. Misdirected religion removes life and joy from worship. When Mr. Now I'm not saying that religion is bad, but misdirected religion. Sucks life and joy out of worship. And this is what happened. This misdirected religion removed the life and worship that was trying to take place. These are the lemon eaters in the crowd. Look at your neighbor and says, is he talking about you? These are the people who want no change. I like things the way they are. I have my memories, and I'll live off my memories. I'll live, I'll live off the good old days. Anybody have some good old days? I got some good old days. But I got some better new days ahead of me. 
But these are the lemon eaters in the crowd. You know, the ones that got their hands in their pocket. Or their hands folded. Or the iPhone posture that I showed you earlier. These are the people who, when a song... I didn't even like that new song they sang this morning. Too long. It repeated, is he worthy, too many times. Do you know why so? Do you know? Okay. Do you know how, do you know why songs repeat themselves? So it gets in you. This is free, by the way. This, this, this lesson right here is free. The rest you'll have to pay for, but this one's free. How many of you, when your mother told you to do something, you did it the first time? Okay, okay. Oh, oh wait, wait, let, 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 let me help you again. How, how, how many of you, how, how many of you husbands, I'll just, ex, I'll just exclude all the women here just so I'm preaching to myself, but how many of you men when, get the hint when your wife drops it? Exactly. How many of you get it when you hear it the first time? The second time? And ladies, can I just tell you, it isn't that we men don't get it. We don't even know. Then we don't get it. I, 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 would, I would rather my wife smack me up the head with a two by four and say, hey, I would like for you to do this. No problem. Don't drop me a hint. Amen. So, coming back, okay, back, 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 back. Hey, wives, look at your husband and just say, Amen. Now, husbands, look at your wife and say, did you hear what he said? Just smack me in the head with a tube. I mean, just tell me. So, I ask you again, why? Why do songs repeat themselves so many times? So that we get it. So that it gets in us. And can I tell you, the songs we sing isn't for us. So here we find misguided or misdirected religion trying to step into worship. And listen, many times, now get this here, many times it is religion that we hide our sin behind while pointing a finger at someone else who is in the wrong. It's amazing how, listen, we all got stuff. I, I, hate to, I hate to bust somebody's bubble, but you're not perfect. But sometimes we will point at someone while we hide behind religion, while we hide our own stuff behind religion and point at someone else, while, God, while we will not allow God to deal with us. Tell your neighbor, just allow God to deal with you. The Pharisees protest that Jesus was allowing such praise to be spoken. The Pharisees had no idea or they were unwilling to see that this was the moment that Jerusalem was built for. Can I tell you that Jerusalem was not built so we could take a 12-hour plane ride and visit Israel? Israel was built for this moment that Jesus riding on a donkey was headed toward. Yeah. Yeah. To welcome the Messiah. That's what Jerusalem was built for. When flesh gets in religion, it stifles the move of God. In verse 40, Jesus said, if I tell them to stop, even the, cro the, the rocks laying along the side of the road will cry out and praise me. Even nature is willing to recognize and praise God. That's why it says in Psalm 150, verse 6, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Then it repeats itself, praise the Lord. We were created to praise God. So as this spontaneous worship concerned some and the religious whine, when the king saw it all, he wept. In verses 41 through 44, let me read this to you one more time. 
Now as he drew near, he saw the city and wept over it, saying, If you had only known even you, especially in this your day, the things that make for your peace, but now they are hidden from your eyes. For days will come upon you when your enemies will build an embankment around you, surround you, and close you in on every side, and level you and your children within you to the ground. And they will not leave in you one stone upon another, because you did not know the time of your visitation. That's hard. We, we just like good messages. It's real easy and feel good and feel good on our ears. Jerusalem was built to be a holy city. It was built to be the royal seat of God's chosen king and the center of the worldwide kingdom of peace. And as Jesus looks upon Jerusalem, the view is breathtaking. The pomp and the ceremony of the occasion was breathtaking. But Jesus sees beyond the outward beauty. And he weeps because he can see the heart. They saw Jesus. This is crucial. They saw Jesus. They celebrated Jesus. But they missed Jesus. What do you mean they missed? They celebrated. They were praising God. It doesn't mean they really saw him for who he was. Jesus wept over the city. Jesus wept over the city because Jesus loves people. Jesus loves people. Jesus loves the up and outer as much as the down and outer. Jesus doesn't love any more, anybody more than anyone else or any less than anyone else. Jesus loves us all the same. And as he looks on the city, he saw that the people were caught up. Get this. They were caught up in the excitement, the emotion, the hype of the hour, yet they missed the promise, the presence, the peace, and the salvation of their visitation. I guess what I'm trying to say Joey, I'm finished. Don't get so caught up in all the stuff that you miss Jesus. I, 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 I'm going to go ahead. I love our worship department. Has a phenomenal leader. I, I believe that our, our worship department has a leader in Pastor Joey McCutcheon that, that his, his heart is drawn toward the heart of God. He only wants what the Father wants, and he strives hard to go after it. And, there is, and, and I'll tell you what, we, we get in here, and they start singing, and the Holy Spirit starts moving, and we're like, yes, yes. And, and, and some, of, some of us fight it. We resist it. We're like, oh. I can't, I can't raise my hand because I was Baptist. I was born Baptist. I can't raise my hand. And I got, so somebody asked me, why is he always picking on the Baptist? I was raised Baptist. That's, I just, that's what I was raised, Baptist and Methodist. And then I, I got, I don't know what I got, but I, 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 I found this one that he wasn't just in a book, but he would come and live in my heart. And, and he, changed, he changed everything about me. He, there, there was a hope and a peace and a joy inside of me that I had never had before, that I would never experienced before. Because I wasn't just reading about a man in a book, but he could become alive inside of me. And then I heard there was this thing called the Holy Ghost. Or, I'm sorry, not Ghost. The Holy Spirit ghost will offend some. The Holy Spirit and I think, oh well I want some of that too. See, I'm like this, that if I realize there's more out there, I'm not just satisfied with the little bit I got. I want the more. If there's one Reese cup, two is better. Amen? I don't want just a piece of the cheesecake. I want the cheesecake. So then I found out that it was the Holy Spirit. And that he had gifts and that he wanted to give me gifts. And I'm like, I like gifts. And I wanted them. I, 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 want, to be, I want to be so in tune with, with the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit that when I see someone in the hospital that, that's dying, that, that, that perhaps maybe God could rest upon me in such a way that I could just maybe just touch him. And I know it's not me, but, but he can work through me even though I'm messed up and I'm fallible and I'm broken and I'm cracked and I'm a mess. He still desires to use me. Sometimes he's just looking for somebody that will touch them. 
And, and, I, and I, I, I just pray this at some point the gift of healing might rest upon me in, in such a way that... Or maybe there's somebody that's discouraged and maybe God could, could, could use me to give them a word of wisdom or a prophetic word or a word of knowledge that might encourage them to keep them from killing themselves to go on to... I remember, I remember one time when I first started, first got baptized in the Holy Spirit. You know, I had this, had this, uh, uh, um, uh, this, this thing called a prayer language. You know, and and that I don't understand it. Just when 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 the Holy Spirit moves and I open my mouth and it just kind of comes out, and I'm like, I have no idea. And, and 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 you know, I think the unknown scares us because we're so used to being in control, and sometimes we need to be out of control. And, and, and when I'm praying in a prayer language, I realize the devil doesn't know what I'm saying because it's a heavenly language, and when he got kicked out, he lost that privilege of knowing what that sounded like, so God's the only one that it means anything to. And I remember being baptized in the Holy Spirit, and, 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 and I've got this, and, and, and so, somebody, was, somebody I know very well was in the hospital, and they said, Pastor, would you pray for me? And I said, yeah, I, I'll pray for you. And I, I remember laying my hands on him, and, and, and it was just, I started started praying and it was silent and the Holy Spirit said pray in your, in your prayer language and I'm like I don't think they'd be cool with that Jesus and he said pray in your prayer language and I just looked at him and I said can I just pray for you the way that the, the way that the Father's telling me to pray for you what I'm trying to say is there is a whole world out there that's in need and Jesus Jesus wants to use you to minister to them. To preach to them? No. People don't need preach to. They need love. Oh, it's one of them church. Just love. Yeah, we, we, we love the hell right out of you. <laughs> that came out before I thought about it. <laughs> but we will. We will. We'll, we'll just love you. We, 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 leave, we leave the shame and the condemnation up to the devil. Christians should have no part in that. that that's, we're nobody's judge. Hey, I, I was right where you were at one time, and I'm sure you're where I Hey, hey we're, we're, we're all just sinners saved by grace. We're all just, we were all born sinners. We were all lost, and if we're saved, it's because of the grace of God. Amen. I don't even know where I'm at right now. guess what I'm saying is don't get caught up in the stuff to where you miss them. What's the big deal about the visitation? Let me paraphrase verses 42 through 44 and I'll close this out. If you only knew, tell your neighbor, if you only knew, if you only knew, even you especially, in this your day, what would bring you peace? But you did not accept your opportunity for salvation. They come from a different translation than the New King James. But you did not accept your opportunity for salvation. Most of the time, listen, most of the same people that were crying out, Hosanna, Hosanna, in this text, in less than a week, some of the same people were crying out, crucify him, crucify. Think about that. And they were called disciples. What happened? They got over what Jesus did. They got over it. And can I tell you that Jesus did not come to satisfy you temporarily. Jesus has come to satisfy you permanently. And to satisfy us permanently means that sometimes we have to walk through some stuff. That stuff builds character. That stuff builds faith. That stuff teaches us how to depend on the Holy Spirit. If, 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 if Jesus gave us our type of satisfying all the time. We, we, we just... 
We just have somebody who, who spoils his kids. And Jesus doesn't spoil his children because he wants us to be men and women of character and of faith. That when someone else is going through a situation, I know where you are, I know what's going on, but I tell you that God came through for me. God showed up and, and he brought me out and he's no respecter of persons, so he'll do the same thing for you if you just keep in there. Tell your neighbor, don't ever get over it. How many times has God moved on your behalf and you got over it and moved on without him? That, that's, that's all, that's what this text is. Is they saw Jesus, they had heard about the miracles of Jesus, they come to see Jesus, they saw him, they worshiped him, they praised him, but they missed him. Because as soon as the tables turned for Jesus, I want no part of him. Even some of his 12 don't think you're beyond it. But how many times has God moved on our behalf and we moved on without him? How many times have we gotten over? How, how many times has someone almost died but they didn't and you got over it? How many times was the diagnosis that you received turned around, God moved in that diagnosis, but yet you moved on without him? How many times did, did, did uh, um, your marriage was on the brink of divorce and, and, and somehow, some way, God moved in, changed the heart, did something, and God turned the whole thing around and restored and passions back in there and you moved on without God? The storm cleared, sun came out and moved on. Or, or maybe our kids, maybe starting to see a turnaround in our kids and we move on. Or maybe you needed a breakthrough and you got it, but as soon as you got it, you moved on from God. Or maybe there was a prayer answered and you got over it. How many of you, and I want to see a show of hands. Oh, no, no. I want you to stand up. How many of you here has ever been healed physically of a physical situation that you've had going on? I want you to stand to your feet. How many of you, my Lord, how many of you in here, you've had an addiction that cling hold of you and God delivered you of that addiction and set you free? Stand to your feet. How many of you have had a marriage that's been on the brink of divorce or trouble and God stepped in and He healed that marriage and you're still in it, still in it today? Stand your feet. How many of you have had prodigal sons or daughters and it took years, maybe even decades, but you're watching God. Maybe you haven't seen the fullness of it yet or maybe you have, but, but maybe you, you're beginning to see God move. If you're beginning to see God move and your kids stand your feet. If Jesus has ever saved your soul and you know him as your Lord and Savior, stand to your feet this morning. This is what I'd say to all of you. Don't get over what Jesus has done for you. I don't care how long ago it was, do not get over it. Don't stop talking about it. Don't stop thinking about it. Don't stop telling other people about it. You tell people till they're sick and tired of hearing it. Don't get over your salvation. Don't get over your deliverance. Don't get over the provision God's made. Don't get over your healing. Don't get over Jesus. That's the big deal of the visitation is that we don't get over you only knew what God had in store for you, you wouldn't get over it. Because I know you've seen God move. I know God saved you, healed you, delivered you, pr provided for you, working on your behalf. But can I tell you, he is not finished with you yet. Do you know how I know that? Because we're in a house of God this morning, not a morgue. Yeah. 
and I ain't afraid to make a trip to the morgue and ask God to resurrect the dead. I pray for it. I say, God, may they come in this morning. May souls be saved, lives be changed, minds be renewed, yokes be destroyed, blind eyes see, lame legs healed, withered hands restored, and may the dead be raised physically and spiritually. Well, for somebody to be resurrected physically, they got to die. Don't be afraid to make a trip. Don't ever get over what Jesus has done for you. And I want to open this altar this morning. And if you begin to get over, if you begin to forget what Jesus has done for you, I'm going to ask you to come and spend some time around this altar and say, Lord, help me to remember. Do you know how you remember? You reflect back on it. You reflect back on the time that Jesus moved in your life. I remember when I was out of work years ago when we didn't have a, enough money to buy groceries. Didn't have any money coming in. I think we had two kids at the time and nothing in the cabinets. And I remember pulling in the driveway one evening. The headlights come around on the front porch and there was plastic bags filled full of groceries all over there. I don't ever want to get over how God provided for me. I don't ever want to get to a place financially that I forget. And if he did it for me then, he'll do it for me again. You come and pray this morning. Don't ever get over it. Or if you have gotten over it, you need to rededicate your life. You come to him. If you've never accepted him, I, I, I sense, <clears throat> I sense that there is a teenager here this morning that you are, you want to come to an altar, but you're afraid of what may, might be thought or whatever. And you just need to come. You need to put all that away. God's dealing with your heart. And you need to come and you need to accept Jesus as your Savior this morning. So don't you be afraid. Even though I know you're not afraid of anything, don't be afraid. You come. And I'm going to ask some adults to go ahead and come down here so that when they do come, they won't feel left out. They won't feel like they're down here by themselves. So if Jesus has ever done anything for you, you come and thank him. If your soul needs change, needs saved, you come and let him save your soul. If there's an addiction that has a hold of you, you come and pray and ask the Lord to deliver you. Whatever the need is, you come now. You know who you are. The Lord's dealing with your heart. You come. Go ahead, Joe. I thought I deserved to be six feet beneath the earth for all the things I've done, the things I said. Choices made that I regret, Lord, I would still be lost. But for the mercy of God, Lord, I'm alive to tell the story how I've overcome. It's goodness and mercy and the power of the blood. I'm so glad that my freedom isn't based on what I've done. Just let God it's deal with your heart this morning. And mercy, the power of the blood. What the mercy of God. Just come and thank the Lord this morning, how he's moved in your life. 
If you knew me then, you believe me. Maybe you haven't seen the fullness of it yet, but come Turn and believe by faith God's moving, He's upside working. Down to the old man you knew. Come and pray for your children, your marriage, your grandchildren. It's what the mercy of God can do. I'm alive to tell the story. There's still someone else. You need to come. Overcome his goodness and his mercy and the power of the blood. I'm so glad that my freedom isn't based on what I've done. His goodness and mercy. You know, I don't do this very often, but we're going to stay right here for a moment. I, I want um, Jay, pray for this young man right now. I want to remind, re reflect back on the scripture that Jesus came. And he said that because you've missed it, there's going to be great turmoil come upon you. And I want you to understand something. I'm not, I'm not trying to project fear on you. I'm, I'm not into that. But I do want you to understand that we will not always have the opportunity to accept Jesus as our Savior. There will be a time when we no longer have that privilege. And I, I just want to encourage you to do it. To do it before it's too late. So I want to extend this just for a few more moments. Not going to take long. If you need the Lord, I want you to come. If you need to accept Him, I want you to come. Go ahead, Joey. If you only knew, if we could just think about it, the things of this earth would grow strangely dim in light of all that he has for us right now and all that's to come in the future, what we don't see. Amen. Well, Father, we give you praise. We thank you for Tony who rededicated his life. Lord, we thank you for all the ones, Lord God, are being drawn in right now. Lord, we thank you for the drama that's going to bring more in. You're going to do a mighty work through it all. Lord, we give you glory and honor and praise because you're the only one worthy of it all. Worthy is the lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world. And worthy is the king, eternally mortal, the one true living God, maker of the universe. We love you, Lord. And we thank you for having such great mercy upon us that you sent your only son, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We ask you, Father, to get us home safe. Bring us back here again for the drama, Lord God, to serve you through acting and through singing, Lord God, and through audiovisuals, Lord, that you would be lifted up and that you would draw all men to yourself. That's our prayer.
prayed in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. You are dismissed. Love you all.